The NASA mission to touch an asteroid and bring a sample back to Earth in 2023, called OSIRIS-REx, is 1,600 miles and one very important step closer to its target, named Bennu. We shipped OSIRIS-REx from Denver, Colorado to Kennedy Space Center and got it into the handling facility and are going through the final phases of preparation for launch. Once we're in Florida, our prime objectives are to do a final characterization tests like the center of balance on the spacecraft, making sure the solar arrays deploy, and then a few last minute um, checkouts and we'll fuel it up and we'll encapsulate it in the fairing or the nose cone of the rocket and lift it on top of the second stage and get ready to uh, launch. After its fiery departure this fall, the spacecraft will travel for two years before it arrives at its destination. The asteroid, roughly a quarter mile in diameter, is thought to be over four and a half billion years old. OSIRIS-REx actually has five objectives. Uh, one, of course, is sample return. That's the primary objective or the driving uh, objective for the mission. But we're very interested in this asteroid. We're interested in its history, where it came from, and we're also interested in where it's going. In particular, is it coming to the Earth someday in a, in a catastrophic fashion? So that's an impact hazard assessment. We're going to be investigating that by tracking the orbit of the asteroid very precisely and understanding all of the forces that influence its orbit. To succeed in its primary mission, returning two ounces of material from the surface, OSIRIS-REx is relying on lessons from previous sample return missions. Even five years ago, just weeks after the mission began, it was clear that one of the biggest hurdles was more than just a safe sample return. It's just as critical not to take along anything extra from Earth. The greatest challenges are keeping the sample pristine, that's going to be a real challenge to make sure that any organic material that we detect from that asteroid was not in fact introduced by uh, anybody along the chain of building the flight system, collecting the sample, and bringing it back to Earth. You know, we're spending a lot of money to get a sample of an asteroid, and we want to get the maximum science value from that material. OSIRIS-REx has done a great job in uh, characterizing the contamination and controlling the contamination for the return sample. So we've had an outstanding interaction between our scientists and our engineers, and we've done a good job of communicating to the people building the spacecraft that it's really important to keep these surfaces clean. So even when we're transporting to Florida, we're in a clean environment because we have a completely sealed uh, shipping container and we keep it under a purge. So we have clean gas flowing across the spacecraft the entire time that we're in the air. So we are not going to be outside of a clean environment even during transport down to Kennedy Space Center. Five, four, three, we have ignition, two, one, zero. The spacecraft will launch atop an Atlas V rocket supplied by United Launch Alliance using Russian-made RD-180 engines. These engines have been a reliable workhorse on NASA missions for 16 years. However, the RD-180 was grounded this spring because of a malfunction on its most recent mission. Uh, we're certainly tracking the progress of the RD-180 main engines for the Atlas V. We do know there was a problem with the control valves on the, on the launch for the last space station resupply mission. Uh, I'm very confident in the Atlas V team. They're very diligent in going through all of the components of that system, and they believe they've identified the root cause of that anomaly. We also have two launches on the schedule in front of us, so we'll be able to see the Atlas V perform a couple more times before we have to get into that ride. And it's important to note that we are fixed at September 8th as our launch date, and the uh, team at ULA is doing everything they can to make sure we hit that date. The three telescopes that are the eyes of the mission were developed and built at the University of Arizona. That's just one of the many connections between the U of A and the OSIRIS-REx mission, which lasts another seven years after launch. The campus of the University of Arizona will be the Center for Science Operations. We are in the middle of remodeling our facility to handle the full science team and science operations team while they're here. And it's going to be a really exciting time for our city. Students have been a major part of our team here at the University of Arizona, and that will continue into our operations phase. We'll have a lot of students that are working on the program, and we're going to have a lot of activity for them. We do need help with our downlink uh, especially, and that's a great task for students to train on. 
I have seen OSIRIS-REx through the entire assembly process, from the forging of the first structural components all the way through the final assembly. I've been intimately involved. It, it met all of my expectations and more. It is a, an amazing machine, and it's really an honor to be part of a program like this. Launches September 8th, 2016 at 7.05 p.m. Eastern.